Church. I am so excited to be here with you today to teach another week's lesson. Let's pray first and then we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this lovely day that you have blessed us with, Lord. We pray that you just help us to trust you, Lord, with all of our hearts, leaning not on our own understanding, but always acknowledging you in all of your ways. We pray that your will is what directs our path, Lord. And we ask today that as we learn about Noah and the virtue of faithfulness, you just really help us to gain insight and knowledge. We pray, Lord, that you continue to let us just be lights in the darkness for you and help our faith to rise up for your glory. In Jesus' name, we pray and amen. All right, boys and girls, as I mentioned, we are learning about faithfulness today. What is faithfulness? It is really just loyally following. So in a moment, we're going to learn about how Noah loyally followed God. Faithfulness also means to just really keep a promise to do what you're supposed to do. And a few other words that kind of can be categorized with faithfulness are just being loyal trustworthy, responsible, dependable. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. As Christians, we are called to live by faith, not always by sight. When we do this and we live by God's commands and we follow them faithfully, he delights in it. And when we trust in God, he promises to keep his word and bless us beyond anything we could ever imagine. So now that we know a little bit about what God thinks about faithfulness, let's hear a great story about how Noah went ahead and put his trust and faith in God. Now, long ago, boys and girls, Noah was chosen by God to build an ark. What is an ark? It's a really big boat. So he was chosen because he loved God so much. He walked in faith with God. He prayed every day to God and he just followed God's commandments. So he's very special to God. God said, I need you to build this boat, Noah. I'm going to do this as a rescue mission. Now, God wanted to put Noah, Noah's wife, and then his sons and his son's wives and a lot of animals on this boat because God was just so sad that the people in the world were choosing to just do evil and cruel things and kind of be selfish. So God was just heartbroken. God created the earth here, a perfect earth for us to really just love it and have fun. He made oceans and lakes for us to go swimming and mountains for us to play on, jungles for us to explore and animals for us to play with. And he made us to be in his image, a likeness of him, to just enjoy this place and to just love on God and have peace with God. Now that was not happening. People ran from God. They were just super selfish and not doing the right thing. So the Bible tells us this made God sadder than he has ever been. His heart was all the way broken. So he decided he was gonna wash away all of the evil and the cruel with a big flood. Now, Noah, being faithful to God, found grace in God's eyes that he was competent or was able to build this boat. So God had a super special rescue plan for Noah. He was to build this ark just the way God said so that all of these animals could fit. Now two of at least every animal needed to get on this ship. So a pretty big boat, you guys. Now this probably made some of Noah's neighbors think he was a little silly, right? Because he has to build this big boat, not by water, not by a lake or a pond, but really in the middle of dry land. So some of his neighbors probably thought, what is Noah doing? This is a little silly or looks a little bit weird. Now, sometimes following God may look a little silly to some people, but that doesn't matter. It did not stop Noah. He knew that he had to build this ark. These animals would be coming very soon and lots of them. Now, once they all arrived and they got in the ark and Noah and his family joined them, God sealed the ark shut. The Bible then tells us that God opened the door to the bottom of the ocean and the windows to the sky. We're not exactly sure what that means, but there was a lot of rain, boys and girls. So much rain for 40 days and 40 nights. It rained nonstop. 
Now, once the rain stopped, the water did not go away. So Noah is on this ark and he can't see any land. There's nothing that he can see. Him and his family and the animals, they're cooped up there for quite some time. A little over a year, the Bible tells us. Just waiting, waiting faithfully for God. Soon, Noah could see the tops of mountains. And what did he do? He sent a dove out a couple of times to see if the dove might be able to find some land or a home. The dove went back and forth a few times on the third trip he did not return. What does that mean? That means, yay, boys and girls, that the dove was able to find land, which meant Noah and his family could finally get off of the ark. Praise God. The first thing Noah did when he got off of this ark was just build an altar to worship God and thank God for this amazing rescue mission that he had blessed Noah to take over or entrust him with. Now, God made a covenant with Noah. A, a covenant, boys and girls, is just a really special promise. So God made this very special promise with Noah that he would never destroy the earth ever again with a flood, even though God knew that people would still continue doing things that really made God sad. So he put a rainbow in the sky to remind Noah of the promise that he would always keep and never break. What a great story about Noah in the ark, you guys. Now, let's skip right over to this week's memory verse, which is located in the book of Matthew, Matthew 5, 15. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone. God wants us to be lights in the darkness, you guys. And we can do that by continuing to just simply live out these virtues that we are learning and just share the gospel with friends and family and even some people we don't know. Now, our mission for this week, you guys, is kind of a fun one. It might be a little bit tricky, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to do something that a grown-up is asking us to do at least one day without complaining. So whether it's mom or dad, grandma, grandpa, a teacher, um, we just really want you to listen to what's being asked of you and do that, whatever's asked of you, without complaining. So sometimes that's not always easy, but try your best, pray to God, he can help you, and then just jot it down. Let us know, was that easy or hard to do? Tell us how God was able to just come through and answer your prayers to help, and bring it on in, and we'll collect some points, and we'll see what we can get in the store next time it's store time. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's lesson. I sure delighted in telling you all about Noah, and I can't wait until I see you guys again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!